New ought to have tested Spurs, but on a pitch cleared of its blanket of snow, the Premiership side quickly showed their superior class and pace. It's Emblen who tried to get the flick on, and now Spurs break with Fox. There's some strong running by Armstrong on the right. Rosenthal is through the middle here. It's Ronnie Rosenthal for Tottenham, and they're in the lead. Oh, and the header back and Sheringham got in. And what is going on here? Spurs are two up and Wolves are in a terrible mess. Who Spurs play in round five is undecided with Forrest held 1-1 by second division Oxford United. It might have been different after Kevin Campbell scampered away to score a fine solo goal after 53 minutes. Forrest ought to have danced to victory, but Oxford earned a lucrative replay with an 88th minute headed equaliser by Stuart Massey, who'd scored the winner against Millwall in round three. These two cities shared plenty of reasons for wanting to be at Old Trafford in the fifth round next weekend. Both held a lead at stages of Wednesday night's tie, but in the end, Ron Atkinson had greater cause to be thankful for a second chance, despite the very best of starts. Flag didn't go up, and a wonderful start for Coventry. No, Whelan is the goal scorer. Uh, Marcus Hall, the field for offside, it's not given. And here's Rustler, and that's an own goal by David Boost. Lomas. Summerby, Lomas. Gets a second chance, denied twice by Dublin. Flickcroft! Nine minutes left as Gary Flickcroft puts Manchester City in front. A stretch by Whelan. And used. Strachan. Still Strachan. Dublin! He's done it again. Dion Dublin. By their own admission, Charlton Athletic weren't at their best in a fluctuating tie with Brentford. The second division visitors were first to score. Barry Ashby having a successful stab at it after some woeful attempts to clear Martin Granger's corner. But Charlton were ahead by half-time thanks largely to the efforts of the much-spied Lee Bowyer and new Welsh international John Robinson. His fancy footwork earned him the space to equalise almost immediately. Charlton, going well in the first division, are equipped to be a dangerous wild card in this season's competition. Bowyer, a teenage midfield player with an eye for goal, is already getting a four million pound quotation on the tabloid stock exchange. He started and finished to move with a hanging header just before half time. But Brentford were the better side after the break. The only irony of their equaliser was that it was handed to them by the man who'd done most to keep them at bay, Charlton keeper Mike Salmon. He admitted afterwards that he was looking where to throw the ball before Paul Smith's overhead crept over his head. So nobody was happier to see the tie won four minutes from time by Charlton substitute David White's free kick. Brentford a little hard done by, Charlton off to Shrewsbury or Liverpool next, although when is anybody's guess. Huddersfield are into the fifth round for the first time in 24 years after the 2-0 win over Peterborough. Brian Horton's half-time pep talk did the trick. Darren Bullock exchanging passes with Andy Booth to shoot past John Sheffield seven minutes after the restart. Paul Dalton's wing play then produced goal number two. Andy Booth finally scoring it at the second attempt. Huddersfield with ten days off before round five, they don't have a fixture. Middlesbrough and Wimbledon must scrap out a replay to decide who'll be their opponents. Wimbledon shaded it but couldn't score. Borough's keeper Gary Walsh denying Mick Harford with a fine save. Another draw, another replay, another fixture jam to sort out. Grimsby Town, going through a sticky patch in mid-table Division 1, were led from the front all right. Player manager Brian Laws starting and finishing the move from which they took a 25th-minute lead. 
Most of the news West Ham have been making recently has surrounded their dealings on the foreign exchanges. But Danny Williamson, an East End of born and bred, is their form player at present, and his blossoming talent set up Ian Dowie's equaliser ten minutes later. They'll try again next Wednesday. Now, remember Matthew Letissier, the guy who used to run his own goal of the month competition? Well, Crew Alexandra had cause to recall what he can do after taking an early lead at Southampton. Gareth Worley swinging in a searching cross and finding the core of the net. The second division side were on the receiving end for most of the night, but Southampton keeper Dave Besson produced the stop of the night, Rob Edwards returning his clearance with interest from fully 45 yards. Letissier hasn't exactly been hiding in the shadows. His form, or lack of it, the subject of continual assessment and discussion. Well, when Southampton needed him most, he was there for them. A trademark goal, his first in three months, forced...